we were looking at a bill that was going to, that was offered by a senator and was going to take one of our supplements off the market, which um, I worked with my lawmaker in Oklahoma and we kept it on. And that's because I made the effort. Welcome to the Natural Products Marketer Podcast. I'm Tina. And I'm Amanda. And we're here to make marketing easier for natural products businesses so you can reach more people and change more lives. Amanda, I'm so excited to have Deborah Short from Sinpa on the podcast today. And I know that she's a personal friend of yours and she's been a mentor to me and many others in the natural products community. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're interviewing her about and what she's talking about today? Yeah, so really excited to have Deborah on the show today. If you've been in the industry for any length of time, you probably have met Deborah. I feel like every time I'm with her, everybody knows who she is or she knows who they are. So uh, really excited to have her on the show today. We had the opportunity to talk to her about the importance of advocacy and how important that is to her and the Senpa organization. Uh, the other thing that we spent some time talking about was uh, the importance of raising up the next generation of, of leaders in the natural products industry and some exciting initiatives that Senpa has uh, to help facilitate that. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you so much for coming here and talking with us today, Deborah. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for letting me uh, join you. Awesome. And one of the things that we wanted to talk about um, and just jumping right into the topic immediately is moving the regulatory needle. <laughs> That's yeah. the big topic of our discussion today. I know it's a lot of what you guys do at SINPA is, is advocate on behalf of the natural products industry. And so I really wanted to kind of pick your brain on um, what's coming up and how we move that regulatory needle, even as individuals in the industry. But first, let's get your um, background and how you got started into this industry, because most people don't grow up thinking, I want to be in the natural products industry. So <laughs> tell us how that happened. You know, I've, I've been uh, very fortunate. My family owned business, which is celebrating this year, actually 49 years in the natural products industry. Um, a great uh, feat for our our family uh, and our, our store in a small town in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Um, we have been very fortunate to have the integrity built around our customers and, and the customers that are in outlying towns. Um, so it so what it is is it's such a wonderful opportunity to be able to be a retailer in these days because you're helping people right so and that's kind of created my passion for what I do in this industry and sometimes I go a little overboard but I can't help it I just I love what I do and I I love helping people and I love how it this um, industry is is morphing forward and doing the, the things that they do. Advocacy, as you've, as you've stated, is um, a big, it's a big issue and a big uh, uh, controversial, sometimes even um, the heads don't even match together whenever we're trying to, to move something and move the needle, but, but the independents are strong. And um, from that family background that I have, that kind of establishes my footing into the industry when it comes to that. Awesome. So Deborah, what, what's currently like the hot button issue as it comes to, you know, what are, what are you advocating for right now? Uh, Senpa is uh, working with uh, some other um, like-minded associations out in the industry. And our, we know that there is um, areas that, that are a little soft that we need to kind of push and make our organization and our, our industry stand tall. So one of the things uh, that is coming up is the 2023 Farm Bill. That Farm Bill comes around every five years. Within that Farm Bill, it, it has it has many facets, many layers. One of the layers being the SNAP program, which uh, was formerly the uh, food stamp program. A lot of our retailers do um, offer that for fresh produce and everything for the SNAP program. With, with these like-minded groups that we're working with, we believe that from the pandemic side and all the studies that are backing things up, a vitamin D campaign would, would be the strongest thing that we can do to help uh, bring awareness that a supplement, even though it's in pill form, 
can help your overall wellness and well-being. You can't get you can't get enough vitamin D from the sun, even though that's the best place. They're fortifying a lot of different uh, foods and milks and different things like that. But still, it's it's never hurts to have a little extra to keep those your um, your your levels of vitamin D up for the uh, you know for to for, to maintain good health. And so that's the biggest thing that we've got going on right now is the SNAP program. Uh, we've we've initiated a campaign uh, through all four vitamin D dot com is the is the uh, place and really what we're doing is we don't we we want to bring awareness to our lawmakers I mean we we voted them into office and so we want to bring awareness um, and to educate them on that level so vitamin D is the big one so Deborah you said all four vitamin D. Uh-huh. And that, do you spell out four or is it the number? It's the number four. Okay. So all four vitamin D.com or dot org? Dot com. Okay, perfect. So people can go there. Is that where you feel like they can become a proponent in this piece of legislation? Can they do something there or is there some other way that they can take action? The uh, SEMPA for our independent retailers, we have developed a group of uh, uh, it's almost a coalition, if you will, with like-minded, uh, strong, 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 best of the best in the industry. Um, and so, what we've done is we've given them, and we're and we're going to share with our SENPA members, uh, opportunity to, uh, in the form of a link, in the form of a we have like a um, an area where people can take our social media platforms and share them and like them and move that forward so that we're getting consumers balanced in with this whole mix of, of moving the needle uh, for the vitamin D campaign. We do not have a co-sponsor or a sponsor of this bill yet. We're just bringing awareness. Sometimes you have to start from ground up and you know develop your footing and so that they at least know that we're out there. So um, the all for vitamin D.com, it has the opportunity for you to just put it, put in your zip code and it's got a preform letter that's already ready to go out. Nice. Okay. So people can go to that website, they can use that letter. And what you're also saying is that they should share the posts on social media that you guys and other like-minded um industry people are sharing on social media and that will help at least get awareness especially for the consumers that come to their store to help advocate this as well that is true and you know the 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 other thing that we have also done is we've worked with a um a registered dietitian and she's doing um some media marketing her name's uh, Carolina Schneider, and she's doing some media markets where she's getting interviews that's going to be put in areas where the, um, because this is in the ad committee, so um, on, in Washington, D.C., so in those media markets, we have offered the opportunity for her to be interviewed and talk about the significance of adding vitamin D into the SNAP program. So that, I mean, we've got a well-rounded, you know, group of, of areas that we're trying to hit hit our target audience. And I just love hearing about this because it just shows what SINPA, um, one of the things that you guys do really well. So you're advocating, you're creating this awareness, you're creating things that other, um, these independent owners can push out to create awareness as well. But you're also advocating in the, in the press and offering experts to the press in the areas where this is going to make a difference to get the word out there and be visible. Plus consumers, you know, the consumer is the one, is the end user. And so they're the ones that, you know, they, you want to get them correct um, studies based, you know, information, not something that is a, um, that, that's not going to have the validity of what this particular nutrient is going to do for you. So we've got the studies that back it up. We've got, we've got, um, people of um, every type of, even some of the businesses, you know, like the nutritional counselors, we're, we're working with them as well. So we're, we're it's a well-rounded type of uh, activated campaign that we're trying to push out. The other one I'll tell you, Tina, is um, there's right now the trade. Sometimes they're the trade, which I'm talking about the bigger organizations that are out there that do not re represent retailers because SENPA does. That's our biggest our our biggest uh, concentration of, of membership is our retailers that come, you know, and so we, we represent them. And so some of the other trades 
organizations represent the, the, the supply side, the manufacturer side, the raw ingredient side. So with that, the, these trades are working together now to try and get an inclusion in the HSAs and FSAs for multivitamin and minerals to be included in that, which is a, a big thing that we hope that as we build our um, grassroots advocacy efforts, that they'll will we'll be brought to the table and they'll be able to use us to help move that needle too for them. Oh yeah, I love that. It's the unified voice, you know, and it's strength in numbers. It's saying the right thing and not and not um, chasing a rabbit down a hole. It's 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 being it's it's showing your integrity as a, a retailer, as a constituent, and as a an advocate for this industry. And that's that's what we're trying to teach. That's what we're trying to represent. So everyone listening knows if they don't already know already that. You know, I know Deborah, you've been doing this for a, a very long time, um, but there's there's a lot of people that you're kind of working with now that you've been working with for decades at this point in advocating for our industry. Um, so just just know as a retailer or as a you know natural products business owner of any kind that Senpo has your back and they, they, this isn't their first rodeo. <laughs> um, we'll just say it that way. That's true. That's true. You know, there's so many different ways that this organization can support. And one of them is everyone networking and supporting each other. And it's, it's like I said, just a few minutes ago, it's, it's the, your voice, the, the unified voice is the best form of action that you can have. And be mindful that every year we get new uh, people who are legislative aides in uh, office on a national level and on a state level. So we have to re reteach and relearn the, the people that are there. And, and quite frankly, it's even some of our elected officials. We have to reteach and relearn, but we want to be the resource. You know, we want the independent retailer to be the resource. So what we want to do is to teach that to our, to our membership. And one of the things I love about this so much is all the things that we'd like to do for the natural products industry in regulatory world, um, it seems overwhelming sometimes because there are so many things that we would love to happen and love to affect so that we can see change in the right direction. And at the same time, I love that you guys are taking the strategy of here's what's coming down the pike, here's what we can affect, and here's how we do it. So you get that unified voice instead of everyone sort of talking about their soapbox that they would like to see changed. This is a way to slowly but surely affect change together. And the more unified that people are, the more likely that change is to come about. Well, and keep in mind, there, there are elected officials in every state. And so there are retailers in every state. And when you get to that point where your elected officials are on a certain committee, the relationship that you develop with those lawmakers is priceless. Um, mm. and, and a lot of times it, it keeps it keeps the integrity of industry and the small business and or the large business. It keeps them, you know, in, on the forefront um, and, and learning and, and being able to have that connection with your lawmaker. I, I did that with... Um, Back in the day, I did that um, when I was uh, president of Natural Products Association because it was we were looking at a bill that was going to that was offered by a senator and was going to take one of our supplements off the market, which um, I worked with my lawmaker in Oklahoma and we kept it on. And that's because. I made the effort and I went to see him at town hall meetings. I went to Washington, D.C. and work, worked with and it was um, the late great Senator Colburn. Um, but he but it was I mean, he would look at me and he'd say, Deborah, I I know I got this. And one of his ever one of his um, town hall meetings, because I always made sure that he saw me a consistent face and he knew what and who I represented and, and where I was. So I, I think it's the best form of action. We've got 20, almost 30 years of Deche coming up. We're going to have some issues they're going to look at. There's Office of Dietary Supplements is being merged with another office. There's so many different things that um, that's, that's in the works that you don't want to jump the gun, but you want to be able to be prepared. That's what we're doing. For the uninitiated, would you mind um, telling us what Deche is and sort of why it's so important for the industry? Deche, it established our platform, our groundwork for what 
the dietary supplement side the, 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 and defined what dietary supplements are They're from food sources. That's what it did. It clearly gave the FDA the power to be able to regulate, which we are a regulated industry, whether it's what anyone wants to say. We, we have regulations that we have to abide by as an, as an industry. But what it did was it amended the food and drug, I can't even think of the name of it, but it, it, amended, it amended the Food and Drug um, Act uh, and it, it allowed for companies to come in and to be, um, to bring their product into the stores, to be able to, to have something that's gonna give a basis of what you could do and what you can't do. It also, it also had another amendment with the uh, adverse event reporting. I don't know if you guys have heard about that, but that was in 2006, seven. And um, it, that allowed even a better, stronger platform for our organization, our organization, our industry as a whole, because it, it, it kind of differentiated the adverse events or the, the contraindications or effects that you may have gotten from a, a over, taking too much of a product or something like that. So we've seen low, low, low numbers on the adverse event side as opposed to a prescription medication or, or a drug. And so it kind of gave, it gave kind of a cushion for our industry to be able to say, these, these products are safe. You know, that they're, they're safe. We're putting them on the shelf. They're safe. They've got study behind them. And so I think that's probably the shape opened that door for us. Now, there's going to be so many things out there. And I agree with Michael McGuffin, who is the CEO of uh, American Health uh, Products Association, APA. I, I think because of the communication that we talked about, Amanda, there's so many different technologies and things like that. Being able to give good guided structure function information out there has just exploded across all social media platforms. And right now in Deshay, there's a certain criteria that you have to meet. You can't put books that describe a, a, a cause or effect uh, for a, um, a disease right next to the product itself. I mean, so now it's, it's with, with, you can buy things online, you can do so many other different things in, in Facebook or showing something that way. It's, it's been, it's kind of blown out and it needs to be, we need to bring that back. I, I totally agree with Michael on that. Um, but, but that just to, just to kind of put it in perspective. And I know I kind of went, there was like a little rabbit shoot thing I was going down. <laughs> Sorry about that, Tina, but, but it, but it is, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, it's it's our rule book. The Shea is our rule book, pretty much. And so as we as we get into the next era of of this industry and and the modalities, then it needs to be looked at. And I I believe all the trades agree that it's going to be opened up and looked at again. It should. It should. You know, I think you hit on something um, that that we talk about all the time on on our show is we want. Um, people to be the health authority in their local community. And so, you know, when issues like this come up or, you know, in, in that case, you know, years ago when they were trying to remove that product from the shelves, it's like our local communities depend on these natural product retailers to say like, hey, this is an issue. We're going to fight for this because we believe in this. And then you're just rallying the troops behind you. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you have this, independent business kind of leading the charge and kind of being the face for for that product or for the industry as a whole. And I think that that's really powerful. And if if as a retailer, you don't have that authority in your community, I think that's, that's probably an issue that needs to be addressed first is being that go-to place for people that when they hear about, you know, things like this, that they could go to their health food store and be like, hey, have you heard about this? What are we doing about it? Senator Harkin said that all politics are, are local and it starts there. And so one, one of the best, probably the strongest um, uh, advocacy that you can do is, is to understand that we, and, and I say that because I come from the retail background, we are the gatekeepers. We are the ones that can keep the bad players out that are causing issue for our industry. And as retailers, you have the opportunity to bring into your stores what companies you want to. And, and right now it's kind of a it's kind of a patchwork of 
companies merging, companies going to different areas, and, and it's it's challenging. It's very, very challenging. So when you when you advocate for a certain product or a certain um, category, you want to make sure that the category that you're advocating for is being well represented in your store and it's not something that's going to, to give you a, a black eye on the back end. That's that's a very strong thing that I know a lot of retailers have done. I mean, we we that we've always been known as the gatekeepers, and I don't think that we're any less than that uh, to this day. Yeah, so big on product sourcing and making sure that you've got good products in your store that um, are well researched, well backed by evidence, and that they're good producers, good manufacturers, because we know that makes a huge difference in the efficacy of these supplements. And so I love what you're talking about there. And just another note of the things that you've been saying is it's all about relationships. First, it's relationships with the people that you're serving, and then also relationships in the community, which include your local representatives. Um, So starting to be a face that they see on regularly, you're talking about town hall meetings, that's a great opportunity or seeing your name in their inbox regularly and being the face of the advocate for this industry and creating that relationship before you need something is a great way to start. It's the groundswell of what we're trying to do here. And um, I see the value. And then the, like, like we were discussing the partnership, we also have manufacturers, distributors, brokers, uh, consultants that are part of our organization. So those strengths that you have on the supply side complement what the retail side has uh, as far as membership for our organization. It's very unique. There's not very many organizations that do that. And we do, and, and we partner with both sides of our uh, categories for, for uh, SENFA membership. Strength in numbers. Awesome. Um, so kind of switching gears a little bit, um, for people that don't aren't super familiar with SENFA, um, you know, we've talked about the advocacy side of things. What are some of the other initiatives that SENFA has going on right now um, that, that we can be on the lookout for? This is kind of cool that you said that because we've just started doing this. The board of directors has been talking about this for a couple of years now. We're just now starting to put together a, a group of, it's, 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 we're not given it, I guess we shouldn't give it an age, but anyway, it's going to be at least 40 to 50 and under who are starting to take um, an, an initiative to be a part of this industry. The, the, um, the parents uh, of the, the stores and things like that are starting to, we're, we're starting to kind of pass the baton. And so what, what SENPA is trying to do, and we've started it and it's going to, it's going to really start to really push is to engage what we have given the title of emerging leaders in the industry. We're going to get them together at our uh, trade show uh, this December and just get ideas because what we, what they're, they've told us, we've had a first initial meeting, but what they've told us is that they need to understand the past, the Deche era, how we got to that point, where we, how we moved forward, what, what challenges that we had then. And then we want, we as a board of directors and as a, an organization need to know what is on the minds of, of emerging leaders. What There's a whole different mindset nowadays. And, and we want to be able to captivate that and to, to bring that in to our mix so that what, we, what as an organization, we can continue to grow. It's so interesting to listen because it's almost like they're the our, our emerging leaders are as hungry for the history of the end of the industry so that they can maybe make a determination for the future of it and that that's that's one of the strongest things that we're doing right now one of the strongest things yeah that sounds uh very much needed and exciting um i'm excited to see how that all all plays out because i think you're right i mean you have to you have to be able to understand the past so that you can you know, move forward in the future, maybe learn from, learn from the victories, learn from the failures and um, make educated decisions moving forward of how to run your business. So I, I love that. I'm excited to see how that all pans out and how that just continues to propel this industry forward. And, and you know, Amanda, communication is different. In the Deche time, I was a part of that. In the Deche time, we got, we had names and addresses of constituents. And then we faxed that. You don't fax things anymore. 
even though even though it, we could still do that and we could scan it and send it in an email, but there's so many different ways to communicate um, in, in this day and time that we need to learn that. What is the best way? What, what, is, what is the best platform to use to, to get our message out? So that, that ha- that's how it kind of complements each other. Yeah. Well, and I love that too, that, uh, you know, Senpa's thinking about the future of the industry as well and positioning themselves as an organization to, you know, service the next group of, of leaders. Um, because like you said, you know, what worked for people, you know, in the, you know, late eighties, early nineties, like, you know, I don't even have a fax machine in my office. Like, you know, like, you know, certain things like that. Um, Definitely. But I mean, even just the way that we communicate our, I think communication styles have changed. Um, Obviously technology has changed. And I think the, just the landscape of the industry has changed drastically. I think, uh, you know, the, the internet era has changed things a lot. And so I think business owners now, emerging leaders now, they have a whole new set of problems. Um, and so being able to figure out how to help them address those problems and, you know, seeing if there's things that they can learn from the older generation and how that applies to today, I think that'll be uh, very helpful. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I believe it's going to be probably one of the best things that Senfa's done in quite some time. I, 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 one, because it's, we, we built our foundation, but now it's the growth, you know, that's kind of where we are on that. It's great. So Deborah, are you looking for more emerging leaders to become part of this or do you have your core group and you're going to be bringing activities to emerging leaders as a result of that? Well, it's strength in numbers, your voice, just like I said, as many people that want to be a part of that, that, that it, sometimes it's just curiosity to see if it's something that might, that might fit into your, you know, mindset and, and where you feel that you're going to give help um, and, and uh, guidance to. Um, I had the same thing with the with our um, our core people, our, our people that have been in industry 25 plus years. There's a lot of them that want to be a part of this this uh, communication and and this group simply because it's going to be teaching and learning. A compl- I mean, we're always teaching and learning, but this is going to at least take it to the next level. So, yes, I, I, I totally encourage anyone to just reach out to me and we'll make sure, especially if they're going to be at Soho Expo this year. Awesome. So speaking of Soho Expo, um, that's coming up very quickly. 93 days. <laughs> um, 93. So can you can you kind of give us a preview of, you know, what people can expect when they attend, different speakers we have, topics, um, you know, exhibitors that are exciting? Yeah. So, so first of all, the board of directors three years ago made a decision to do an all business day on Friday. So they've called it and and coined it Senpa Summit. So Senpa Summit usually has a keynote uh, for breakfast and lunch. This year, our keynote is Bonnie Hari, the food babe, the uh, partners, we'll just say, at Trevani, which is a protein company, Derek Halperin is going to be in there. He's like a marketing guru and he wants to come in and he wants to do something. So we're going to have Bonnie in the morning and Derek in the afternoon. We also have breakout sessions and these breakout sessions are going to be just totally not product specific, but it's going to be more of marketing efforts, um, uh, uh, merchandising efforts. It's going to be, we have one um, person that I think was on your, was one of your podcasts. Um, Ryan Sensenbrenner is going to talk about AI um, which cool. scares me, but that's okay. See, <laughs> it's the next gen emerging leaders. There you go. <laughs> so I just take it with a little small bite at each time. And then we're also going to have, uh, we've got a panel discussion with some brokers and supply chain, um, uh, that are going to tell you how to work with your supply chain. We do have a retailer that's going to be coming up there. Um, that is got, he wants to kind of share how this, the, the current landscape is with out of stocks and companies merging and how retailers can pretty much uh, evolve and be a stronger store, we'll say, uh, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, so that's what we've got. Then, then we've got uh, four more product specific um, speaking uh, breakout sessions that are going to be Friday night. Every, every, you know, it's, it's November the 30th. We have our, our, um, 
golf outing on Thursday, but uh, but then we have Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday all day long is is education for our Senfa members. Saturday we we have six meals that we give to our retailers and um, for free and their staff. And then we have um, the show floor is open uh, Saturday morning till about five. And then Sunday we have breakfast and then we have that till about three o'clock. So yeah, it was super, this is our 53rd year. Super stoked about it. Super stoked. And just as a note, people can go to register for that because it sounds really exciting. Would love to hear about AI and listen to the Truvani team. That's very exciting as well. So if people want to go register for it, they just should head to sinfa.org and go to Soho Events there. And they should be able to um, do the registration online. Yep. It, uh, our retail members are the ones that will be able to be... Uh, to be able to go to the education events, you have to be a member. It's $95 a year. You can bring unlimited staff. Um, we also have some other perks that we give to our retailers. We know it's expensive to have to travel and to stay, at, but it's at the Gaylord. I mean, good Lordy, it's amazing there. Uh, but we give our independent retailers, if you stay at the host hotel, $65 back a night. So that's our little room rebate that our um, manufacturers and supply side of our organization, uh, they support us on that. So they're helping to to offset costs for our independents. So it's a, it's good. It's always a great time. Always a great time. And so we just encourage everyone. Yeah, senfa.org, go to the Soho events or call the office. You know, you can absolutely call the office and we'll be able to help get you registered. Great staff here. Excellent. So look, we've talked a lot about what Senpa does on the regulatory side of things and also what's upcoming um, with these emerging leaders. But can you just give us a quick rundown? You you told us a little bit just then about the benefits of becoming a Senpa member, but would love to hear. I know you guys do a lot more than what we've covered. So the big things that people will get out of becoming a Senpa member. So in our name, Natural Industry Alliance is exactly what we do. So we have different uh, partners that we have uh, to, to help with business. We have, um, we work with a printing company. We work with a credit card processing company. We align ourselves with all the trade magazines. We, we promote on a, on a large scale our, our trade show opportunities for networking. Um, ab- the education that we have. And then quite frankly, what you've got here in the office is, is longevity. You've got the longevity in the industry. I've been in it for 49 years and, and the girls here cumulative have been in for like 23, 24 years. So you've got all of that industry experience and passion for what we do. Um, so that, that to me seems like it's, if nothing else, that is the great, a great partnership. At least you're calling someone and you're having a conversation with them. And I, I know what you're saying. <laughs> I did it. You know, I don't, I don't have to, I don't have to look it up or something like that. I'm uh, myself and, and the staff here we, we're, we have, we're dedicated and um, we believe this industry is something that is worth fighting for and, and supporting. So you've got that partnership along with everything else that we offer. Yeah. And plus just from experience, the community is amazing. There are so many great members that are already in there. If you have a problem or a situation that you're just not sure how to handle, somebody in that community does. They've been there before, just like you're talking about. So even if they don't, a member doesn't reach out directly to your staff, which of course they're available to do. But there are also community members who are more than willing to give a helping hand, give advice, and just be great connections and relationships that sometimes you just want to talk to someone who's been in your shoes before. And Senpa is a great place for that to happen. I'm glad you said that, Tina, because we do have uh, 11 currently board of directors and each one of them are listed on our website and you can see a familiar face or even if you need to reach out you, we have a an area where you can send an email to us and we can connect that with our with our um uh with with the board of directors we have six that or we have five that are independent retailers and then six on the supply side that that stand tall for for industry and they're very reputable people and they're ready to reach out and to lend a hand however they can that's the beautiful part about the dedication that this board has. And I'm very proud of them for that reason. Deborah, we always like to close out um, 
our show with just some rapid fire questions with our guests to keep up with kind of what's going on in the industry. Um, what do you read? Who do you listen to? Who should we be following um, to kind of keep up with what's going on? Are you talking about in the media or are you talking about trade? All of the above. All of the above. I, I usually go um, real quickly. My, my, my go-to is the, um, is the trade magazines because they do keep up with, you know, most of the, the vitamin retailer, the Whole Foods magazine. Um, I think that that's a, a strong one. For me personally, I, I go to, I get pushes from The Hill. Um, I get pushes from roll call. I get pushes from FDA itself. It comes to me in my inbox every day. And so that's something that keeps me um, updated so that we can give give uh, information out to our, our uh, members. Yeah. So our show is Natural Products Marketer. So we both love marketing um, and want to help natural products market better. Um, so what's something that you wish that could be different um, or things that we could change about the way that natural products are marketed right now? I think it's, uh, you know, there, there, there was something that was put out called truth in advertising. And I, and as long as that is being exercised, I think that, and you, and you develop your audience that knows that what the information that you're giving them is truthful. Um, I think that's probably the best uh, source and resource that, um, an independent and or a organization can have because you want it, it needs to be that way there's so much that jargon that's out there it can leave anybody jaded but it, the bottom line thing is if, if i know that you're a go-to resource for me and i know that the people that that um, you've built your platform with is something that i know can can strengthen and i can feel comfortable with and take it take it to the bank if you wish um then that's, that's where it needs to be. That's what Sentho wants to do is just to be that resource and have that communication and that, um, to, to have that, uh, in our front pocket. In other words, you know, just to know that, that what we're saying is right. It's the truth and, and to be that resource. All right. Uh, what do you think is the single bu- biggest decision you have made that's led to your success in the industry? Uh, wow. Being here, you know, if I didn't get that opportunity to be here and with my predecessor who had, has had 45 years experience running this organization, building this trade show, building the, the relationships that she built, Carlene uh, Reed at that time, now Walker, um, if, 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 if she didn't have that trust in me to be able to do this and to move it to the next level, I, I just, you know, it's. I, I, I don't know. I, I would still be at our health food store in Oklahoma, but I, I, but this is a bigger platform for me. And I think that's my jump and that's what I needed to, to, to enhance my career in the industry because I bring the passion. I mean, I, I just, I know I do. And so I, and I want everyone to, to understand that this is the best industry that, that you can be a part of because it, it's so rewarding. So I guess it would be have to be the position I'm in. Well, you're doing a great job. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. Um, what do you think is the biggest challenge for our industry in the next three to five years? Uh, is there anything that's kind of keeping you up at night? Yeah, uh, the biggest thing is, is that our trades are not aligned. Um, there was a coalition that blended those together. It was called the Coalition to Preserve Deche, and everyone had a place at the table. All and we had one unified voice. That's why I keep pushing for that. Right now, the trades are not aligned, and I don't know the full extent of it. I mean, I have um, my my ideas and everything, but it's just it's it's bringing those bringing that united voice back together, and it it almost seems like a patchwork, so that whenever we go and we talk to our legislators, they're not seeing cohesiveness. And that's what I think we need to do. Uh, SENPA is trying to do that with our retailers and our supply side members, manufacturers, uh, in a call we had on August the 8th, just to just to blend it and, and to start that coalition all over again. So that that's probably three to five years. They'll get it right. They'll get it figured out. But, you know, it's it's going to take some some work cohesiveness to get together and and be on the same page. Very good. Um, Yeah. And I think that that's something that, again, kind of going back to that 
emergent leaders conversation of the the people that were not a part of the Shay um need to be initiated on it and how to you know speak properly in in their communications with with um their consumers um what they're saying online what they're saying in person um because it is it is this dance that you have to do um to be compliant and i think that especially with um the internet being what it is and you have so many people like you know especially like influencers and things like that that don't have any of that education of what they can and cannot say you're seeing things like oh yeah this can replace your Adderall it's like no no you can't say that (laughs) but that's that's the trend um and so I think that that's something that um senpai I think could probably lead the charge in in just helping helping these retailers understand what you can and cannot say and manufacturers too because i know it definitely affects them with what they can and cannot put on their labels it's the support right it's 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 the partnership and it's it's the end result that you get is the uh quality of your voice being being announced out there to our lawmakers to our general public and everything else you you want to be you know, the elite of the elite, you know, you want to be the best of the best and you want people to come to your stores and shop there because they trust you. They trust you to bring things to the, to your store and, and to share that information and to, and to articulate what, what the studies behind it have. And, 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 and then to be mindful that we are a natural product store. We're not a, in a wellness type of, of uh, atmosphere. We, we are, we're not something that you can not work with your doctor if there's um, issues. You know, we, we, we need to keep that. That needs to be very, very mindful because people will think they can come in and just take something because they heard something, like you said, on whatever platform there is. So, yeah, it's all truth. It's truth and truth in advertising. So what are, what are some things that you think are low hanging fruit for people in our industry that they could get some quick wins um, in their business today if they just kind of grabbed a hold of these low hanging fruits, so to speak? Join Senpa. I mean, right? You go, jo- go and join Senpa and, 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 and attend the trade shows that we provide excellent education. Keep yourself updated on on the current trends that are going out. I, I know that there are some companies that have decreased having a lot of sales in the field that are out there. Those people were the educators that are there. But sometimes you have to spend money to make money. So going to these trade organizations, uh, to these trade shows, like Senpa produces Soho's, Soho Expo, Soho Health Fest, and then some of our Soho Road Shows that we're going to be kicking back off very soon. It, it's It's that kind of you know, taking the bull by the horns, you have to do it for yourself and then take that and just almost just push it out to all your social media channels. I went, I used to do this whenever I was a retailer, I went to a trade show and, and, and studied underneath this person, this person, this person, and understood the best way that I could sell a certain product. Uh, your consumers and your and your customers will come in just because they know you weren't there for a little bit. Well, what did you learn? You know, that's that's the type of thing that it has been in the past. Put it in your social media. Take pictures. Let them know that you're doing something for them, not just for yourself and for the store and having a vacation because you're working, quite frankly. And then you're networking, right? You're networking with all of the people that are your peers and you learn from those people, you learn from their, their experiences and their downfalls and, 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 and the the sharing of information, the partnership that's together there, it's priceless. It's just priceless. So aligning yourself, bringing, bringing everything to the table and educating yourself and your staff is probably the most valuable thing that you can do. And I'll tell you, Deborah, just, I've spoken at a couple of the Soho events and one of the most meaningful pieces of that was not necessarily what I brought to the table, but there would be Q and A at the end of those sessions and the retailers would talk to each other and educate each other about things that they were doing in the marketplace. And I found that was the most valuable part of those sessions for the people who were there because they had real problems that they were facing and another person in a different state 
had the same problem and they had figured out how to overcome it. And having those conversations back and forth and just the camaraderie and the people who've been there and done that before, I I just saw some magic happen in some of those sessions at the Soho events that didn't even have to do with the speakers, but had to do with the other people who were in the room. So be in the room. And I think you can get a ton of value out of that. Well, and keep in mind, we have independent retailers that are 780 square foot stores up to companies that have two to 12 to 21 to um, massive amount of stores. Let me just say that. And so sometimes what you learn from just the small store, it might be something that a, a, a dual store uh, chain may not even think about or vice versa. And so that to me is, I mean, the beauty of having a, an organization that, um, allows that kind of diversity and, and to be able to have that kind of communication. I 100% agree. Amanda, I know you've said on panels that we've done the same thing too. It's just, you, because you've spoken at Soho events, it's just, it's just um, magic once you get there. You're absolutely right, Tina. And thank you again for being, both of you, for, for uh, assisting us at, at Soho events that we have. Yeah, absolutely. We've loved being a part of it. So Deborah, to kind of close us out, um, if people want to get in touch with you um, or, you know, be a part of Senfa, how can they, how can they get in touch with you? Probably the quickest way, because it's just to go to the senfa.org. We have a contact us side on there and that, inf that, that information is circulated around in our office. Um, the, the, it also has all our contact information as far as the telephone, you know, or if you do, do fax, we do get faxes, believe it or not. Um, we, we have that information on there. And then my personal email is dshort at senpa.org. So I, and I, I never put a, I'm away, um, message on my email because I always check my email. I think I wake up in the middle of the night checking it sometimes. It's crazy talk, but <laughs> But I, 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 that is probably the best way to do it. And then attend our roadshows, uh, all our roadshows, our Soho events. Everything is listed on our website. Awesome. Um, any, any final words, any closing thoughts that you might have, Deborah? You know, first of all, it just, it's such, it's such a rewarding feeling whenever I come to work in the mornings to know that I'm working with a group of people that have the same kind of passion that I do for the industry. So overall, being able to come to, to come to work and love what you do is probably the best thing. And I just encourage everyone to, when you walk into your stores, when you, when you, what your business is uh, or anything like that, just kind of look around and just go, you know, I'm where I need to be. And this is a good, good thing. A very, very good thing that we have a small office here. Uh, there's just three of us. Um, but when I walk in here, the energy is so fresh and so, you know, current. And I just feel so, I feel so aligned um, that whenever we produce our trade shows, then you, then you get to go and, and see all your the people that you talk on the phone or you send email to. So the networking part of it is wonderful too. So all in all, I'm just, I encourage everyone to come see us at Soho Expo, definitely. And uh, to give us a shout if you have any questions. Great. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, Deborah. We really appreciate your time and um, yeah, best of luck with Soho Expo. We hope it's going to be an awesome show and we'll be there. So <laughs> yay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm very excited. And thank you so much for your time. This has been great. It's been my pleasure and I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks so much for listening to the Natural Products Marketer Podcast. We hope you found this episode to be super helpful. Make sure you check out the show notes for any of those valuable resources that we mentioned on today's episode. And before you go, we would love for you to give us a review, follow, like, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you're listening today. And make sure you join us for our next episode where we give you more marketing tips so that you can reach more people and change more lives.